Welcome to Cujo Sound, and this is the Piano Destruction Session. Before we get started, I want to give you a small disclaimer here. I do not encourage anyone to destroy any musical instrument whatsoever. This specific piano was left behind in my new house. It was old, it sounded bad, and it had been treated very poorly by its previous owner for many, many years. It had to go. And I see no other way than to take it apart and record all the sounds and make sure that it goes to piano heaven with the utmost respect it deserves of being a musical instrument. Welcome to Cujo Sound, and I really hope that you will enjoy this piano destruction series because we had a lot of fun recording all this for you. All right, so the first thing that we got to do is we got to unpack this equipment. I've ordered a bunch of stuff from Tolman, and it's just cables and stuff to hold the microphones. The reason why we do that is because, of course, we don't want to be holding the microphones by our hands, and that's a really good idea in general so that you don't get noise in it. Uh, and second of all, you can never have too many cables and microphone holders. Alright. Bunch of microphone holders for all kinds of different sizes of microphones. I just bought the cheapest ones that I could find because that's what we need. We have two Millennium DS30 microphone stands. They can be standing on the floor so that we can have a nice wide impact, especially our MS microphone can be standing from that distance, pointing at the piano. We have a desktop microphone holder that we're going to be putting on some sort of box that we can then use our more sensitive microphone to be much closer or much wider or whatever we want. And we have this big top one that we can use for more top-down recordings if we need it. Okay, so the kind of equipment that we're bringing with us today here is that we are primarily going to be using our two Sennheiser microphones. This is a 416 and this is a 418. The difference is they, they kind of look like each other, but they are not each other at all. One of them is a stereo MS microphone and the other one is a regular shotgun cardioid microphone. Now, if you only recorded the mid from this one, I would probably say that the technology inside them is probably the same. So they would say it sound kind of similar. This might be a little noisier. But this one is an MS microphone. If you don't know the difference between a cardioid and an MS microphone, you can get a nice description of how those things work in another video that I've made. And you can click the link above. Apart from that, I brought some other microphones, just some whatever crap I had left over at my house. It's not a crap microphone, but it's just in my left upper box. An old Shua SM58, and this is an SE Electronics SE3. This is also a cardioid microphone. How can you tell that this is a cardioid microphone? It's because it has a membrane up here. Well, not really a membrane, it's just a diaphragm up here, and there are holes underneath it. What this does is that whatever sound comes in from this direction will hit the diaphragm first. Whatever sound comes from here will hit these holes first which means that these holes, whatever comes into these holes, at the same time as it, as, it, as it hits the diaphragm from here, will be phased out because it comes from the other side of the diaphragm. That's how, basically how cardioid microphones work, and we'll get to that in the second video that I just mentioned. Second, a bunch of headphones, my favorite, HD25 from Sennheiser. I like Sennheiser in general, but these are really, really nice. Probably the best headphones I've ever had, and I use them almost all the time. I've also brought a small little speaker here. This one is really nice because we can just solder it onto whatever cable that we want, plug it into whatever we want, because a speaker like this is the same thing as a dynamic microphone. So we can plug this into the piano, whatever we want. And the cool thing about this one is that it's also magnetic because the coil is open. So we can basically just put it onto the piano like this and get some cool stuff out of it. Second, third, fourth, so I've brought good old H28 from Motu. Um, I used to like Motu a lot, had some problems with it, but this card never failed me. Uh, it has lots of inputs, both microphones and line ins, and we can just plug whatever we want into it and we can then clean it up afterwards. It's just good for that. Soldering iron, you never know when you need to solder something. And we do, because we need to solder a piezo disc that we can use as a contact microphone in a minute. Tools, wire cutters, and good old multi-tool leather man. Also, priceless tools to use. 
When schools close down, you get all sorts of equipment out of them because they're just throwing it out anyway. So if you ask politely, you can get all sorts of equipment. Like this tape recorder here. It's really old school, but it has a nice 2 millivolt microphone input, which means that we can just jack our SM58 microphone straight into it, and then we can probably get some nice sounds out of it. Hopefully, either it records really well, or it records like shit, and if it does so, it's going to be really nice because then we can use the warmth and other things and other artifacts that comes out of the tape whenever we're ready. A Tascam HDP2 recorder. This is a really nice recorder that we will primarily be using with the MS microphone. The reason for this is that this records in stereo, but it also records in a really, really high sample rate. We don't need the high sample rate to record the frequencies that we don't hear. We just need them for time stretching and reverb purposes. We also need the high sample rate because the MS microphone seems to produce artifacts in really, really high frequencies if you distort it, which is a really interesting thing which we can use. We also brought good old 80K vintage valve microphone. This is a vintage valve, class A valve, A48 it's called. Probably 48 is probably just because it uses phantom power. It's really nice. We're gonna be using this really close up because it's super sensitive and it's very different from the Sennheiser microphones that we're gonna be using as well. That's it for all our equipment stuff. Let's get to soldering the piezo disc and set all this equipment up and let's get ready to record. The first thing that we're going to do is probably to record as many keys and strings as we can, clean recordings that we can use for whatever natural, normal purposes. And after that, we're just gonna destroy the whole thing and see whatever awesome sounds we can make out of crowbars, wire cutters, and other things. It's gonna be really fun. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Check out the channel for more videos like it about game audio, sound design, and other things. Also, consider signing up for patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound. There you can support me for as little as $1 a month and you can help me sustain this channel. I would really, really appreciate it. See you next time.